Welcome into the video. I am your tech guy, Wayne, and today I want to show you how to set up the Samsung Galaxy S25. Now, in this video, I'm going to go over how to keep your screen on longer. We're going to show you how to connect to Wi-Fi, how to transfer all your contacts, pictures, text, everything from your old phone to this phone. And then we'll end the video with showing you how to set up password or if you want to set up your fingerprint to unlock the phone with your fingerprint. Let's jump into the video. And if you get any value, make sure you bump that like button down below and that's going to help this get shared out to a lot more people. First, let's go over how to keep the screen on longer. If you notice, the screen goes dim really quickly and it can be frustrating. If you don't touch the screen fast enough, it's going to go dim. So if you swipe down from the top of the screen, and you swipe to your left, you're gonna see a settings wheel in the upper right corner. Tap on the settings wheel, and we're gonna swipe up to display. Go to display, and then swipe up, and go to screen timeout, and we're gonna change this from 30 seconds to five minutes. Usually two minutes or five minutes is the sweet spot. And also you wanna enable keep screen on while viewing. This will keep the screen on even longer as long as the phone detects that you're looking at the screen, all right? Now next, I wanna show you how to connect to Wi-Fi. Now, when you swipe down from the top of the screen, I want you to notice there was a change in the operating system. So when you swipe down from the top, sometimes you see this, and sometimes you see this. So I just wanna make this really clear for you. Uh, the camera is your guiding line. When you swipe on the left of the camera, you get your notifications. If you swipe to the right of the camera, you're gonna get the control panel, okay? So uh, just keep that in mind, and if you ever swipe on the wrong side, you can always just swipe left or right to toggle between these two menus, okay? So to connect to Wi-Fi, you want to hold down on this switch. This is your Wi-Fi switch. If you tap on it, it'll take you to the menu where you can basically turn your Wi-Fi on and off, and once it says on, and this little switch is to the right, it'll show you all the available Wi-Fi networks, and you can swipe through and find the one you wanna to connect to. I'm gonna to connect to this Fuller House network. So once you find the network, you're just gonna put in your password, and once you've entered it, hit connect, and that's it. And if you ever go to a, a different location that has Wi-Fi, you follow the same steps. You swipe down right of the camera, tap on Wi-Fi, and this will show all the available networks. Select it, put in the password, that's how you connect. Okay, next, let's go over how to transfer all your contacts and your data from an old phone. Now, I'm gonna use a Samsung S24 to do this, and I'm gonna try to cover every scenario that you guys might be encountering at home, but just starting with transferring from a Samsung phone, what you'll wanna do is on the new phone, you'll want to swipe down from the top, Go to the settings wheel, go to accounts and backup. And then under smart switch, it will say transfer data for device setup. We'll tap on that option and this will take you to the Samsung smart switch app that will facilitate all the transferring for you. You're gonna hit more, hit continue, more, allow. And now on your old phone, now if it's a Samsung, you're gonna follow the same steps Swipe down from the top, upper right corner, tap on the settings wheel. We're gonna swipe up again to accounts and backup. Transfer data for device setup. And they will take you to the Smart Switch app. Now, if you're switching from a non-Samsung phone, no problem. You'll wanna go to the Play Store. This little icon right here, Play Store. And you'll just do a search and just type in Samsung Smart Switch or I like to do this trick because it's a little bit easier. Tap on the microphone in the upper right corner. Samsung Smart Switch. You just say Samsung Smart Switch. Look for the blue S. This is the current um, icon. Hit open. You'll install it first and then open it up. And then this will allow you to start the transfer process. On the, on the new phone, you're going to hit receive. On the old phone, you'll hit send. One important note to keep in mind is that both phones need to be above 30% or more with battery or it won't allow you to do the transfer, okay? So let's hit Galaxy Android and wireless and wireless on this side. Now give the phones a few seconds, they're gonna send out a signal and it's gonna allow them to pair together. You can also do this using a cable um, if your phone uses a Type-C cable. You can use the cable that comes in the box for your S25, but 
older phones uh, will have a micro USB and it'll make it a bit trickier. So um, when in doubt, just use the wireless model. Just know you've got to keep the phones close together. If you separate them too far apart, they will lose connection and then you have to start all over again. Also, excuse the background noise. Uh, my kids are running around and video's got to keep going. So, okay, so once it scans all the data on your old phone, it'll bring up this screen and it will give you some options. The everything option says, hey, take everything from this phone, put it on this phone, super easy. Uh, in the just accounts option, you can limit it to just accounts, calls, contacts, and messages. The third option is custom where you can select specific things that you would like to be transferred. Um, I am gonna just do everything because that's the easiest option here. Hit next. Now, uh, it's gonna start the process and it's gonna also ask you a few prompts. So you wanna stay close to your phone for the first few minutes. So right now it's asking, do you want it to transfer the accounts, which you definitely want it to take all the Google accounts. All right, so our transfer is now complete. It, it took about an hour, so. You know, it takes some time. It just depends on how much data you're transferring over. One thing I want to point out is that it's still going to take some time for all the features to load. So you'll see things that are blurred out on your screen. So don't be alarmed if you see that. For example, like my widget here is blurred out. I have some apps down here that are blurred out. I can't access them just yet. So basically like uh, it's pulled all the data from that old phone and now that data is on this phone and it's sorting through it and it's downloading the pro proper apps and it's putting the data that goes with those apps. So just know all that takes time and uh, after a couple of hours, the rest of your stuff will load and be visible, okay? Now let's move on. So now that our transfer is done, the next thing I wanna show you is how to set a passcode on your phone and how to set up the fingerprint sensor so you can unlock the phone using your fingerprint. So we're going to swipe up. I'm gonna show you a different way to get to the um, settings app this time. So swipe up. You're gonna swipe down to settings or obviously you can tap there to search it. But from here, you'll wanna go to lock screen and AOD and go to lock screen and biometrics. And we need to set either a pin, password, or a pattern. I'm gonna set a pattern, and you can basically draw a combination that will be your lock code to unlock the phone. So I'm just gonna make it an L like this. Hit continue, one more time, hit confirm. Perfect. Now on this screen, it's gonna ask you some questions about how you want things to look. Do you want it to actually show notifications on the screen or just icons? I'm gonna do cards and we're gonna hit done. Now that that's set, we can then set up our fingerprint to unlock the phone that way as well. Go to screen lock and biometrics, put in your code and now go to fingerprints. Okay, continue. Hit register and now we're gonna grab the phone and you wanna try your best to hold the phone and just press down the way you would normally. That's the best way for it to read your fingerprint. I see some people putting the phone on the table and pressing their thumb in a weird way. Don't do that. Hold the phone in your hand and do it this way. Every time you lift and drop your finger, try to slightly move it a bit, but you want to have it read your finger in the most natural way possible. So whenever you grab the phone, it should be an easy read. It shouldn't. You shouldn't have to press down multiple times for it to read. There we go. Now, one quick thing, I do recommend you always set up a second fingerprint because what if you have something on your right thumb? You can easily pass the phone to your other hand and unlock it that way versus only having programmed one finger and then now you have something on it and you can't unlock your phone the right way. So tap add and then it'll let you add a second fingerprint. Hit done. We're going to lock the screen and I'm just going to double tap to wake it up and then there we go. So now our fingerprint is programmed on the phone and now we have that extra level of security. Okay, next I wanna show you how to program your shortcuts on the home screen. You have this little gray line on the right side here and when you swipe into that line, it'll bring up what's called your app edge and here you can have shortcuts to your favorite apps. Now there are certain apps that they have selected right now as default, but you can change those really easy by tapping on the pencil. 
This will bring up the menu. If you go to the upper right corner and tap on the three dots, you can change how this is laid out. So by default, these four apps are enabled. These are AI apps. And you might say, hey, these are fine, but like I'm never gonna use the drawing assistant, so I can uncheck that. And the new, um, the now brief is cool, but you might say, I'm okay on that. You can take that off and the AI select. So that way, once we tap here, now it has freed up more space for you to add more apps. So now I can go in and say, cool, I wanna add Best Buy, I wanna add Amazon. Can you tell I do a lot of online shopping? And you may wanna add one more, like I may wanna add Google Chrome, so I have a quick shortcut to the web and my favorite chess game. All right, I'm, and notice as you add seven, it's gonna split it from one line to two or one column to two. And I can add a few more apps if I want to. I think I'm gonna add my chat GPT in there as well. Let's hit our home button. And now when you swipe in, you have this shortcut of your go-to apps. So that's another thing you'll wanna set up. This is a very useful feature and I use this all the time. On my other phone, I have like my uh, home smart locks on there, so I have an easy way to unlock those. I even have a shortcut to my ring camera. So you add things that you tend to access a lot. That's where this becomes the most useful. And one thing you'll notice is that my apps are starting to light up, whereas a lot of them were uh, grayed out before. So a lot of them are being downloaded and are being set up. So that just shows you that we're in the process and things are moving in the right direction. Okay, next I wanna show you how to create AI wallpapers or just how to change your wallpaper. We're gonna go over how to do both. You're gonna make sure you're on the home screen and just hold down for one second. It'll bring up this menu and you wanna to go to wallpaper and style. From here, tap on change wallpaper. So first you can see all the featured wallpapers that come stock on the phone. Tap on featured. Let's say I wanna make this my wallpaper. I just tap on the picture and I can decide here, do I wanna put it on the lock screen and the home screen or just the home screen or vice versa? You can uncheck if you don't want it to be on your lock screen. You're gonna press next. It'll give you a preview of what it's gonna look like. And if you wanna save it, you can then hit done to lock it in. Same thing with the gallery. If you go to the gallery, you can look at all the pictures that you have stored on your phone and you can pick one to be your wallpaper and or your lock screen picture. Now, if you go to create with AI, here you can actually create your own wallpaper. Go to generative. And from here, you can select from different themes. So let's say I wanna do terrain. And then I can pick certain keywords for it to create a wallpaper with. So let's make this a realistic beach is good. And the color, let's make it yellow. And let's hit generative, hit let's go. Give it a few seconds and it's gonna create a wallpaper with that description. There we go. And it usually will give you four options. And I like these. I think I'm gonna go with this one. Hit set, next, and done. And now I have a new wallpaper that was created with AI. So that's a really fun feature, great way for you to just lock in, you know, whatever your style is. Okay, and lastly, just really quickly, I wanna to touch on setting up your Samsung Pay so you can pay using your phone. At the bottom of the phone here, there's a little gray bar and you're just gonna swipe up. This will take you to your Samsung Pay. And this is really just hitting continue and following the prompts. And once you finish that, you can pick one or multiple of your cards, load them into your phone, and then you can pay using your phone just by swiping up which will take you to your digital wallet. So pretty cool feature there. I have some other videos on that and I'll link those on screen as well in terms of the setup process. Now this brings us to the end of our video. I hope you guys did find this helpful. If it was, bump that like button down below. I have a lot more videos covering the S25, so I'll link the playlist right here so you can see all the other videos I've shot. And I'll link another really helpful video right here as well. Thanks again for watching guys. Take care and as always, have a good one.